Greetings, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. So um, this week, I just want to um, first want to invite you to join me on Odyssey. So if you'd kindly, won't you kindly, please, um, check me out on Odyssey. Actually, Odyssey just announced that they have no ads. They're not doing ads at all. That is not a part of their business model anymore, which I think is freaking fantastic because I can't tell you how much I absolutely abhor, abhor ads. I don't have them on my website. I don't have my YouTube channel uh, monetized because I just hate flipping ads. And I feel like people should just, if you want to support someone, support them directly. Um, you know, you can go to my website, reinstallpaul.com. You can support me uh, if you want to, but I'm not ever going to... Um, Put ads on my uh, on my videos or anywhere because I myself personally just don't like ads. And plus, a lot of the stuff, all of the stuff, really, is a bunch of garbage. I mean, let's be honest. All the stuff that people are hawking on YouTube, and I know some people say, "Oh, that's sour grapes." You you you're just saying that because you're no. I actually it's something called integrity, and I just don't like ads personally. Like they just. They just annoy the shit out of me. And I mean, for me to just sort of just do ads or monetize my channel and force people to watch ads when I myself don't like ads, I mean, that's just kind of, that's just kind of low rent, isn't it? So um, check me out on Odyssey. I just did a live stream on there just to kind of, um, I did a live stream uh, about Stonehenge. There's some very interesting news about Stonehenge, by the way, but that's not going to be this week's topic. So please just check me out on Odyssey. The link is in the description. So um, for YouTube and just kind of in general, I just want to, um, first of all, a quick update. I have, um, I think I have my, I might have a couple more, um, couple more chapters on this book I'm working on. I don't have, I'm not going to reveal the title yet, but um, by year's end, I expect to have actually two books and it'll be on my website. Uh, I think I'm, one of them is actually going to be free for everybody. Just kind of, you know, um, it's kind of a good idea since I'm a new author um, to kind of put that out there for free, give people kind of an idea of like, my writing style and what, you know, what to expect. And uh, if you like the free offering, which will be a fully fleshed out book, if you like the free offering, please consider purchasing my book when it becomes available. And I'll make announcements in the future uh, when that comes out. So this week, um, and I'm kind of, I'm kind, I'm kind of continuing on the last video I made about, uh, it was a couple of weeks ago about biology and psychology because I realized that as human beings, we're just completely irrational creatures. Okay. We're totally irrational. And what I mean is we, um, okay. So, so here's the way I see things as far as like our general kind of, um, predicament, let's say that we're in as human beings on this, uh, insane planet. And with all the, um, just insane stuff that's going on. So you have to think about like what we are um, just kind of objectively in a sense, right? So the first thing that we are is like primarily, I'm saying, primarily in like the physical biological sense, we are primarily animals. We have instincts. Okay, we may we may psychologize those as needs, um, or desires, or whatever. They're instincts. Okay, and really, the strongest instinct in any animal, including the human animal, is survival. And so, there's so many things that are integral to survival. Right? There is food. There's sex. There's child rearing. There's you know greed. Right, that's a the way to psychologize it. Um, there's fear. Um, there is compassion. Right. There is um, love. There's all of these things that actually, when you really think about it, 
Okay, whether they're psychologized or where we or whether we understand them as a base instinct, they are all integral to survival, right? So, you know, if you think about um, if you, if you take kind of the human animal and then uh, you know, because we're we're these strange creatures that we have this this animal kind of instinct. We have these animal bodies. We need to uh, you know, we need to service the instincts that we have, or we need to service the desires, the needs that we have. But then we're more than that, right? We have this psychology that you just kind of put on top of this animal. So if you took some animal that um, didn't have any kind of consciousness or, or wasn't sentient, but it just had all the regular animal needs, and then you gave it this ability, then you'd basically have what this is, you know, what, what I am and what you are. And it's this very strange sort of, um, and you have to understand one one thing important, that as human beings, we are an animal and we are more, right? We have this psychological element. We have this ability to sort of contemplate our own demise, to, um, to we're sort of aware of the world in, in, and we have language and we have all this stuff that's not anything, that's not a core feature of, of the other animals. But you have to understand most of that is, it seems to me like most of the psychologizing that we do in our language and everything, really a lot of that, and a lot of our decision making, I'll say, really comes down to our needs and our instincts. Because you have to understand, what is primary to the human uh, creature in general? What is the most primary or first thing? And you really can say, unless you're like, you know, unless you believe the earth's only 6,000 years old, which I don't, what's primary to the animal is, what's primary to the human being, right, is the animal element or is the, or is the instincts or the needs or the base desires. That's primary. That's, that's most foundational. That's first. Okay. That's the first thing. Okay. Then you have the monkey expansion pack, which are, you know, which the frontal lobes, the neocortex. Then we're talking about the capacity for language, the capacity for abstract thought, right? The capacity for, you know, thinking about uh, the future and remembering events from the past in a way that uh, only a human can do. As far as we know on this planet, we're the only ones. Uh, the only creatures like this, but that is secondary, guys. That is secondary. So what does that mean? That means that a lot of your decisions are irrational in the sense that a lot of your decisions really come down to your needs and your instincts and your base desires. And then you may you may make some sort of decision, but then you can psychologize it after the fact. You can rationalize your decision making later. Okay, but I would argue that most of our decisions are actually going to be. Uh, more instinctual, more to do with kind of that, with those base needs, right? And then we kind of just rationalize and psychologize and we pretend like it's it's not, uh, we, we, we kind of don't even think of ourselves as animals, right? And, you know, I asked someone uh, many months ago, I was having a conversation with someone, and I asked them, what do you think the most trainable animal is on, in the, on the whole planet? What animal can you train? What's the most highly trainable animal? And she just was like, oh, I don't know, a dolphin, uh, maybe an elephant. And I go, no, people, right? Human beings. And we forget, we really forget that we have this this animal um, side to us. And I think that really gets us twisted up in knots. And I think if we're really just honest about like what we actually are or, or what is the most fundamental part of the human being, it's really that, that animal instinct side. And you really have to understand that, you know, if, if you're not really aware of that, I mean, that can really, uh, that really, the instincts, the instinctual side really gets us in a lot of trouble, doesn't it? It, it seems to, because we can rationalize all sorts of things after the fact, but what we actually did was irrational in the first place, right? And I would also argue that a lot of the psychologizing that we're doing is coming from our basic needs. So we're just kind of, we think we're being rational, but as a matter of fact, we're probably being irrational. We're excusing instinctual uh, behavior through our rationality, but but that you know rationality or psychologizing is largely just some sort of great like denial of what we actually are, 
Now, I'm not saying we're just animals, obviously. We're more than that. But you have to, like, really stop and think about, like, how much, how much psychologizing from our biology are we doing? Like, because I, th- I, I think that a large percentage of our, what we presume to be our rational, uh, you know, our rationality, I don't, I think a lot of that's just instinctual. And, and I think for a lot of people, people are operating on a level that's very instinctual, even though they're just fooling themselves. We're just kidding ourselves and we're rationalizing it. So what I've been thinking a lot about is, you know, if we're not aware that we're animals, okay, then there's all sorts of manipulations that can happen from people that do realize that um, human beings are essentially, fundamentally animals, primarily, and then secondarily are rational creatures, not the other way around. You're not rational fundamentally and then after the you know and then somewhere secondarily you're an animal oh no no you're an animal first and foremost primary foundationally you are an animal okay you have instincts you have desires needs and then secondarily you are some sort of creature that has this extra capacity this monkey expansion pack for rationality but that rationality, I, I would say, I would estimate is largely uh, being, being kicked up or signaled from your instincts. So then again, you know, there's a lot of just instinctual stuff going on that we just sort of rationalize and psychologize and we don't even realize we're doing it. We don't even know like the difference. So let's just presume there's a group of people that know this, that aren't really saying this out loud. And... You know, what would they do or how would they be able to uh, control a situation with masses of people? Well, one thing they could do is, and, and very easily, is through mass media, just continue to deliver uh, messages in a what appear to be a rational way, what they're, you know, plainly just delivered in language and and they don't seem like they have anything to do with your animal instincts but what what these messages are secretly doing and by the way it's a two-way street so when your when your rationality is informed by your instincts right the instincts kind of inform and cause you to psychologize on their behalf well guess what you can go the opposite direction right so I can send messages or anyone can send messages over and over and over. And it takes repetition, by the way. To train an animal, it takes a lot of repetition. I'm talking about a human animal or any animal. It takes a lot of, of, of repetition. Well, let's say I psychologize or rationalize or deliver something on the news over and over and over. Okay, That doesn't just go to your mental capacity and stay there. Oh, no. It goes into your biology. It goes into your instincts, okay? So the pathway to deliver um, the inputs that you would want to a creature, okay, that has rationality somewhat, like a human being, you could use the rationality or you can use messages and languages in language, like say in the news media, and you can send those messages repeatedly, year after year, decades even. You can send decades of reinforcing messages through uh, mass media. And in the instinctual body, that starts to build, okay? That will build and build. It will reinforce unconsciously. And eventually, it will provoke, okay? And it takes a long time, okay? So think about if you were to, how would you provoke like an animal that, you know, just a a non-human animal? Well, you would provoke a non-human animal just by repeated, you know, acts of, you know, you poke a stick at it over and over. And even if it's a very docile animal, a very gentle animal, you're poking it over and over and over and over, right? And you could do this to the animal for weeks, months, years, years upon years. Maybe the animal doesn't do it. But eventually, there's going to be so much built up in the instinctual part of that animal that eventually it will lash out. It will 
do something irrational because it's an irrational creature. Well, humans are the same way. So if you if you think about all the messages that have come to you over and over, think about everything you're taking in, okay? Any, you know, violent content on Netflix or these messages that come through the news that just reinforce the same messages, right? Be afraid. There's people that are very dangerous and they're out there and they're going to get you. And I'm not saying there aren't people like that. There are, right? I'm saying that you have to be mindful that your instinctual side can be manipulated by your rational side and you're not, you may not even realize it. So it could take months, years, usually years. What I'm seeing, for example, I'm just going to use an example. What I'm seeing in, uh, what I, what, what I'm seeing, what happened in the United Kingdom with these, um, with the outrage over the stabbing, these, these three children, right, were, were stabbed and killed, uh, at a, at a school, at a nursery, a day, day nursery, daycare. And then the, the reaction to that, right, was just over where there was just, you know, thousands of people in the streets and it got really ugly, right? Some of you saw this. Well, this isn't, this didn't just happen spontaneously like that, okay? This happened over decades because people were very concerned. Um, and, you know, this isn't a political thing or anything, but this is really a decades long provocation, okay? Because that's exactly what it's, it feels like to me. There's a provocation, and this takes a long time. So you can take people that are very, um, very docile, not you know, not aggressive people, and then this isn't excusing. Obviously, this isn't excusing the behavior of some very young aggressive people, angry people that did some awful things uh, during these protests, lighting fires and, you know, making threats and, and, and damaging property and assaulting people and stuff, you know, obviously. But what I'm saying is collectively, there's a provocation that took many decades to build. And I don't think that without that, without that continual provocation, you would have seen violence at the scale that, we did see, okay? So I feel like, and, and, and this, is the, this is not just me saying this, but there's a, there's a feeling, there's a sense that the governments of the world, especially in the West, they're doing this, this sort of provocation where they're clearly not, um, they've, something has clearly changed, right? From the past five years, from let's say the Cerveza, uh, uh, pandemic Cerveza virus, right? And something has clearly changed where they're in some mode where they, they know at least the ones at the very top and the people who kind of are uh, giving out marching orders to the um, political uh, muckety-mucks, the, um, you know, the, the uh, useful idiots, I think they realize that, I mean, they've been provoking slowly uh, over many years with, in different, you know, different ways. Um, and it's only, see, I think the thing is, it's only a matter of time. Any animal, including a human animal, can only take so much provocation unconsciously before something just snaps, okay? I'm not saying people are just all just going to snap, but I think collectively there's this provocation that's building. And I think it's for a reason. And I think they need this provocation because without it, okay, without this provocation, without having some sort of um, year, decades long provocation that builds up and then eventually people start to, you know, get really upset and um, and they don't really quite know why they don't know they don't even realize that they've been provoked year after year after year unconsciously, and then because again most people are in denial about their very animal nature and the fact that they can be provoked in a way that they're not aware of right. Yeah, some people just snap. Yeah, some people have anger issues or whatever, but you know a lot of people can feel depressed. A lot of people can feel uh, anxiety. And that's also that same sort of provocation. So I'm not saying you're provoked into anger. You can be provoked for 
over years and years and years of very dangerous social media, um, you know, conditioning that provokes you into feeling a certain way so that you, you know, maybe you, you buy a product or something. I mean, it's really just, uh, it's a very powerful force, I feel like, and I, and I think it's, it's well unrecognized, underestimated. It really flies under the radar. It's almost like they figured out, because, you know, in the 50s, there was this whole thing about subliminal advertising, and they had, um, and that was around for a little while, but then uh, they made that illegal because they realized quickly that that was a very, um, it was like a direct a direct line to influence people in such a powerful way. If, you, if you've seen the movie The Manchurian Candidate, right, it's sort of like from that era uh, um, that they, you know, so it's almost like if they couldn't make subliminal advertising legal uh, at some point, some, you know, nefarious bad actors uh, figured out, well, if we can't do that, well, at least we can use um, repeated provocation on different levels to achieve, you know, we put in these inputs over many, many, you know, repeated inputs over and over and over. And eventually, eventually you get the desired result. It's not, you know, some exact predictable thing, obviously, but you get some sort of adverse reaction that then you can deliver the cure. You can, oh, we have this. Or you can also, um, if you wanted, for, for example, in the UK, if you wanted to excuse away, if you wanted to run cover for the fact that the banking system and the government and all this stuff is just a giant mess and it's because of the establishment and the people at the top, well, they want to run cover for themselves. And so they're going to provoke in every which way they can. They're going to provoke the general populace in uh, ways that are very predictable. And then they, you know, it's the classic, you know, let's blame immigrants. Let's blame um, racist people on the far right. It's blaming all these people except the people at the top who created the very um, desperate economic conditions that, you know, we have now that uh, really it's a matter of just wealth preservation for the people at the top. They don't really care how conditions are at the bottom. They're just going to provoke, and they've set this up for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. They've set up the provocation machine, and it starts very you know, very gently, very slow, you don't really recognize it. But eventually, if you provoke an animal, even a human animal enough, it's going to react in a certain way, and it may not quite understand why. You may just feel like your life sucks and you have anxiety, but maybe you've been provoked year after year after year by messages coming at you that maybe just seem rational. They seem innocent enough, but they're going into your instinctual biology and they're disrupting you in a way that you're not conscious of. I really, I felt that in my own self and, and since, you know, I've begun, I felt this maybe, I don't know, for several years and I've, I've worked towards uh, mitigating those effects. Okay. And I think a lot of this is happening to people and they don't really understand why. And they blame social media. They psychologize the blame, right? They'll blame all sorts of things. But if you realize that, well, every little bit of it is some sort of provocation, then maybe you should sort of um, take a more comprehensive approach and realize that you need to, you need to soothe the animal, right? You need to soothe the instinctual side that's irrational, and it doesn't know why it's being provoked, but it is being provoked. So try not to psychologize your anxiety, in other words. Try not to rationalize your depression. Try not to do that because what I think, what I suspect may actually be happening, not in every case, of course, but what I suspect was happening in my, uh, in my case was that the, there was a, an, an irrational... Uh, direct link to my biology, to my 
um, instinctual animal side that was being provoked unconsciously and I couldn't I couldn't put a finger on it I couldn't quite rationalize it. but once I figured out well wait a minute where does my biology end and my psychology begin and vice versa well th- when I started to realize that maybe there's an integral link there and they're quite quite interrelated then things started to make a lot more sense so hopefully this uh, and I know this is kind of a long one but hopefully this is um, gives you some food for thought and I'd love to uh, see your comments, read your comments and see what you have to think. Okay. Well, have yourself a wonderful week and I'll see you next time.